Welcome back to IT Camps. I'm Harold with Microsoft. And in this short video session, I will show you how to configure Hyper-V Replica as well as enable it for a given VM. And we'll watch the replica process hopefully complete, if not at least see it start. So with that, let's go ahead and jump over to my demo environment. I am actually connected currently to my demo lab hosted by Groupware Technology in San Jose or Campbell, California. So I've got a couple of Dell servers over there. This happens to be one of them and it's called development. I've got a folder structure here on my D drive called replica. It's empty currently so there's nothing there. What I want to show is actually connecting to a different server now. So let me go over to VDI also in that same lab environment in San Jose. I have Hyper-V Manager up and running and I've got VDI and development connected to. If I right click on development, choose Hyper-V settings, you can see there is an option to configure replication configuration. So I will enable this as a replica server. So pay attention. I am actually turning on the target server to receive replication. I am not enabling this on the source server. Right, so the first step is enable the target to actually receive replica traffic. I am going to use Kerberos and HTTP. I understand it's not going to get encrypted, but there's a reason. In my lab environment, I, I just don't have everything set up for certificate based. But if you're going to do it in your production environment, definitely would set this up with security. Right, and I'm going to go ahead and allow replication from any authenticated server for simplicity's sake. I am going to go ahead and browse over to my D drive and go to replica. Right, so I'll select that folder. If you scroll down, you can see I could also allow replication only from a certain set of servers. I won't select that. I'm just going to do any authenticated and I'm going to click OK. I do need to make sure that the firewall is enabled to allow replication to come in. It warns me, but I've already enabled that rule, so I'm okay. And that was done on development. So now at this point, I'm going to go to VDI. I'm going to go highlight DC2, which is a running VM. And I'm going to right click and choose enable replication. So the first step I did was I enabled replication from the, uh, the target perspective so it can receive. And now for each VM that I want to turn on replication for, I would go enable it for a VM on a VM by VM basis. So let me click through this wizard. I'll click next. The replica server is development. Click next. And it went out. It took a look and said, all right, it's there. I'm going to go across port 80. And I will choose the compressed data as I transmit it over the network. So I'm going to click next. You can see that this is the hard drive. I'm going to click next. I'm going to go ahead and only do the latest recovery point. I can choose to do more, but that just means it's going to take long and there's more to send over. For demo purposes, the latest is fine, but in production, take a look at how many recovery points you would like to have for going back to a certain point in time. So I'm going to go ahead and choose next. I will send the initial copy over the network because I'm not over in uh, San Jose right now. If it was a huge VHD file, I probably could do via external media. Make a copy, send it over there, and then copy it in. And I will go ahead and start the replication immediately. Normally, in if you can schedule this for off hours, that's probably the best mechanism unless it's just that important that you have to get it done immediately. I'll click Next make sure all the settings are correct and then I'll click finish. So at this point you can see it took the, the request. If I right click and choose replication you can see that there are now different options. I can pause, I can cancel, I can look at the replication health. What I'm going to do is minimize this and go back to development just to show you if I now go to my replica folder you can see it created Hyper-V Replica and in here you can see that it's starting to do some of the work. So there's a planned virtual machine migration and eventually stuff will start moving across 
and you can actually see a little bit is already coming across. Right, so in terms of enabling Hyper-V Replica, it is actually fairly straightforward. Let me minimize that. It's a matter of configuring the target in terms of where you want to send the replicas. And then you go to each VM that you want to replicate, go to the properties of that VM, and enable replication. So it is a multi-step process, but you turn it on on the target, and then you enable each VM for replication. So with that, I do want to point out a few next steps. Right, go ahead and get your hands on the code for Server 2012, and there's a link, which is the middle one, and all the other stuff around System Center 2012 if you want to evaluate the full private cloud solution. You want to get some free online training, go take advantage of Microsoft Virtual Academy, and take advantage of some of the server virtual labs. Right, that's a hosted environment by Microsoft, lets you play with things that are already pre-configured, and a guided lab manual that walks you through different steps. So with that, I want to thank you very much for your time and encourage you to go spend time and look at all the other recordings that are part of this IT Camp series. Thank you.